All right, we are live here at Music Guy Portal Studios here in Aberdeen, Maryland. And I'm sitting next to William Howard. Uh, he has just launched Shall Not Want. Um, so real quick, William, I want you to first introduce yourself and introduce the song. Sure. So my name is Will Howard. Um, I just released my single, Shall Not Want, on October 2nd. You can find it on all digital platforms, Amazon, uh, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your music. Um, so thank you for those that have been listening. And for those that have not heard it, be sure to uh, go to your nearest digital uh, platform to listen to the song. Let's just dive into the song a little bit first. Um, and then we're just going to talk a little bit about us personally um, with our spiritual walk. Um, but let's just dive into the, uh, the song, Psalm 23. I'm, I'm believing that's where the inspiration right, came right, from. Right, right. So just real quick for the listeners, uh, if you guys want to just grab your Bibles real quick and pull up Psalms 23. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have this memorized if you're <laughs> saved, sanctified and all that. But for everybody who, who's not familiar with the scripture or has not been to church, uh, let's, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths of his life's sake. Even though I walk through the, uh, the, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Uh, that is the scripture that gave this song inspiration. Uh, your first verse. Give me, give me the mm-hmm. first verse of what you're saying there. So the first verse, when I open up the song, I'm saying whatever he, whatever he wants. What is this? What? Whatever, all right, whatever he needs. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. Whatever I need, he has it. Whatever he has, I can have it. He's the shepherd of my soul. I used to be afraid, but no more, because my trust is in the Lord. I shall not want again. Yeah. Amen. I, here's one of the reasons why I love that scripture and I love this song is because it points to the obvious. Mm-hmm. We all... Are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, right? right. You know what I mean? That's going to be, a, that's a natural part of life, right? Birth and death is a natural part of life. Uh, but I still, despite that, I fear no evil. Right. right. To be able to walk through life with fearless mm-hmm. um, is what I believe God can offer individuals. Right. Sometimes people say, you know, well, I got to believe that or I'm not I'm not perfect, you know, or I'm going to hell already because I've done too much. But if you truly want to be free mentally um, and to be free from the fear, not saying that bad things won't happen, but it won't impact your walk. It won't impact your destiny, your path. So the reason why this is this this that scripture is so powerful is because that's what that scripture can do. Now, your song shall not want some people go to god looking for um they're looking for a change in life they're looking for they do want stuff right they want that husband they want that wife they want that house they want this and they believe that if they tithe and um if they go to church and they do ministry that they they can get what they want So what are you saying in this song that's different than that mindset of I'm coming and I'm giving because I want something from God? Right, right. So how do you? I I would say that, first of all, when you you come to Christ, you lay down your life for his will. You know, he said, if any man follow me, he has to take up his cross, follow me, he has to deny himself. Mm. And so... With that being said, you are already coming in making an exchange. So you're making an exchange for, you know, maybe the way that you thought your life was going to go, every plan that you have for your life, and you're laying it down for his original design for your life. So when you're walking in his original design for your life, there are some things that you're going to go through that are going to process and make you to get for you to become that person that he designed you to be. So with that being said, that already signs you up for trouble. You know, you're going to have some hardships. You're going to have some dissonance in your life because it's going to make you 
uh, into the design that he he planned for you. So when I'm talking about I shall not want, that's really what I'm addressing. I'm a, I'm addressing that conflict within yourself that you have about the things that you see for yourself versus God's design for yourself. And uh, sometimes there's no resolve there if you haven't taken time to really address it. And people end up being frustrated. People uh, end up taking matters into their own hands because they haven't had that resolve of your will for your life versus God's design for your life. So when I when I'm saying I, I shall not want, I ha- I'm relinquishing that frustration. I'm relinquishing that anxiety. I'm relinquishing all of that, and I taken in exchange whatever the words is and I'm saying to myself even though I can't see it I don't understand it it's not how I would make it to be whatever he says is good enough I just have to believe that I I totally agree Um, what would you say to an individual though that because here's how I here's how I see kind of what you're saying and it might not be what you're saying but from my from my lens if God has designed a certain will for your life, a certain path that you have to take. Would you agree that that path is not always going to be sunny? No, it's certainly not going to always be. And it might cause you to feel like you're abandoned, Mm -hmm. like you like or, 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 or God doesn't even know what he's doing. Or maybe he's forgotten about me. Right. And I feel as humans, I feel we have to go and get that back. Mm hmm. In the term nowadays, we hear finding our peace. I feel that when I hear that word, finding my peace, I don't hear people getting close to God. What I hear is whatever walk, whatever was happening, I want to cancel all that. Mm-hmm. And I want to create my own destiny so I can go find happiness. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you've given up on the path that you were on or the road that you're on. And you are now taking the wheel yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, the song Jesus Take the Wheel. And I feel like in 2023, people are taking the wheel. They're walking away from marriages, walking away from families, walking away from churches, walking away from jobs because they're tired. Right. They they feel, they do want now. At this point, I want happiness. I Mm -hmm. want peace. I'm not getting it here. I'm out. Right. Right. And I feel like with this message here, I challenged people in that in that state you know when you want to walk off that job you want to walk away from your family or walk away from that church because you don't feel at peace right i feel like you have not involved god in that situation Mm -hmm. and the reason why you're not at peace god says cast your anxieties on on him him, right Mm -hmm. so if you're feeling that fear you're feeling that anxiety and you tell yourself i gotta go find my peace what does that look like in your mind what does that seem like to you when someone says, I got to find my peace? Yeah. Um, they're doing whatever they can do to to get some relief. And I mean, I, I want to say because we're we're human. So we understand it rightfully. So, you know, everyone wants peace. You know, we don't have a high pain tolerance. A lot of people don't. So it's like you want to find that relief for yourself. But at the same time, um, by you doing figuring out yourself and i'm um, doing what you kind of want to do how you want your life to look that doesn't like uh like you were just saying it doesn't always include god in it right. because his way is totally different and uh, sometimes the intention is to uh break your break your will um so that you can enlarge your capacity to believe more about and, god and totally depend on him totally depend it increases your faith yeah you know when something happens you know, that you had to believe God for it enlarges your capacity for belief. And faith is like a currency that God uses. It it gets you a lot in God when you believe on him for uh, things that he said that he would do. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how that's what makes him act. That's what makes him move, you know, just believe in his word. And so he brings you to these moments that seemingly would break you, but it's enlarging your capacity to believe because if you're only going off of, you know, what you acquire based on what you visually see, you are cutting your options short. You know, there's a lot that 
uh, you can have in God that is goes far beyond you could even think. What it said, um, you know, now Tim is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the power that worketh within you. So I think that those tests and trials that you go through, even though they're hard, mm -hmm. they enlarge your capacity to um, see what you could actually take and also how much you can believe God for. Uh, but people can't take it. I think yeah. that's what the issue is, though. Mm -hmm. I like what you said about faith, and I want to it, 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 uh, I want to go to the NIV version for Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for mm -hmm. and assurance about what we do not see. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear individuals say, I want to find my peace or I'm looking for happiness, and you're trying to tangibly do this yourself by taking an executive action in your life that may be against the kingdom, maybe against what God wanted. Uh, but you know what? You're, you can't take it no more. Whatever, the, whatever. maybe it's the restless nights. Maybe it's the, like you said, the, the tolerance of the pain, which, again, if that goes too far, that can cause physical, oh, illness, yeah. mental oh, health yeah. issues to the point where I, I just have to, I have to just take over because I'm going to lose it if I don't. Right. That's where Hebrews 11 really comes in on that because what it says here, faith and confidence in what we hope for, mm -hmm. right? And assurance about what we do not see. Mm -hmm. I don't see happiness in this situation. I don't see happiness at this job. I don't see happiness with my kids, mm -hmm. with, my, with my current wife. I don't see happiness with this friend circle. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see happiness at this church, so I'm out. Mm -hmm. I'm out to go find happiness. But then where's the faith? Right, right. Because God is telling us that we're not supposed to just see it. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to have faith and hope that if we give ourselves away to God, like you were saying earlier, that his will mm -hmm. will start aligning right. with us. So I don't have to want anything right. when I surrender. Right. And if you... If you find yourself, you know, aligned with the word of God, like you know that he's ordered your steps, that's the main thing. If you know that you are in the will of God and he's ordered your steps to be where you what are right now. What does that look like to somebody? Um, does, that, does that mean like I got to just get my life together? I got to put away all sin in order to to get God to notice me? No, what that means is, is that you have to be yielded and submitted to God, not void of sin. Then it just means that you have yielded and submitted your life to God because at that point, then he could lead you. Like he said, he leadeth me through the paths of righteousness mm -hmm. for his name. So he leads you mm -hmm. through righteousness. You don't know that way. So you can't lead your, you can't just not say, yourself. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not, a, I know I'm not a drinker no more. I don't go to bars. No more. I'm righteous now, right? You can't just yeah, you, do that. You can say that, you can but say that, you don't but that, know. That's what, not righteous. Yeah. We don't, is not in us to know that. Right. We don't really know that the way of righteousness. Only God is holy. Right. So he so has you, to. You lead can't us. just create a checklist of no sins that you're not doing and say that makes me at least more righteous than I was. No, and that's probably not going to go well for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's what I feel like. A lot of people are in this circle, and they're, they've been going to church for a long time, and they still feel like they're not healed mm -hmm. because they feel like they've given up certain friends. Right. Mm -hmm. They have. They've. They started going to Bible study. They started singing on the choir. They started giving their life to God, but they see no results. Right. And I feel like it's because they're checking a box. Right. They're that going could, down, well, yeah. trying to, like you were saying, they're not going through a path of righteousness being being led. led. Yeah. They are going down a path of righteousness, taking steps and checking. Okay, check. Right. I didn't do that. All right, take the left step. All right, check. And they're doing it themselves. Right. I think a lot of people don't know what submission mm -hmm. really looks like. Right. If you if you really you know lay yourself up before God, he he's gonna he's gonna take care of it. You don't have to have an anxiety about being perfect or an anxiety about checking off a box. Just let the Lord lead you and, and give you the grace so that it's real. Because when God does something, it's done. Versus you trying to to do it and make it happen, and it's it's not done because he's he's dealing with the matters of the heart. He's dealing with the why you're doing what you're doing. He's dealing with what led you to that. So. He he has to lead you through the path of righteousness for his namesake. And it's all about his namesake because it was his son that paid the price for your sin. You know, so his his name has everything to do with it, you know. And so that's why he's leading you, because he's showing you, you know, not only did I pay the price for your life, but 
I'm going to get you. I'm, I'm very vested in this investment. Not only did I, di- I die for you, but I'm going to take you from here all the way to glory. And that's something that only I can do. You cannot, you cannot do it yourself. And, you know, in the Bible, I believe it was in Luke chapter four, uh, when Jesus was being tested by the devil, right? Mm-hmm. We all, listen, if, if the demon can test Jesus... What makes you think that you're so holy and sanctified that he can't get in your mind? Right. And I find it very hard to believe that a lot of people uh, at least portray that they're not dealing with any wicked spirits mm-hmm. uh, when they go to church and that their life is just all righteous. And when they do not testify, when you do not testify to your fellow, to the people you're fellowshipping with, we, we tend to think that's hypocritical. Right. Uh, and then we take offense. I'm not hypocritical because... You don't know my business. You don't know. And we we pride ourselves in saying, you don't know me. Mm-hmm. But we can see you, brother. Mm-hmm. We can see that you're not healed. Mm-hmm. And maybe we don't have all the answers, but we can see that there's something wrong. And I feel as though that when we, uh, to go back to the scripture I was talking about with Luke chapter 4, when the demon was bothering Jesus, he was offering him desirable things i can give you all the 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 kingdoms of the world you know i can i can lift you up and who wouldn't want that i can make you famous you see i could take you out of this poor neighborhood and i can i can give you prosperity Um, and i want to pull that scripture up Mm -hmm. because i don't want to misquote it sure um matthew chapter four i think it's luke chapter four was in Luke in Luke two? Uh-huh. Uh, let's see, Luke chapter four. Yeah, Jesus is tested. Luke chapter four, and um, and so Jesus responded, uh, four four. It is written, "Men shall not live off of bread alone." Mm-hmm. The devil led him up to this high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, "I will give you all the authority and splendor that has been given to me, and I can give this to anyone I want to if you worship me." Mm-hmm. And Jesus answered, "Worship the Lord your God and serve him only." And the devil uh, led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. "If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning to guard you carefully." Right? So some people can listen to that spirit and say, "God got you. Go do what you want to do." God got you, right? And what, is, what did Jesus say in response to that? Jesus answered, do not put the Lord of God to the test. Right. Right? So you're, you're sitting here saying, I'm going to go find my peace. I'm going to do it my way. Mm-hmm. You know, God got me. When you, when you say, I no longer want you, God, taking the wheel, I want to go find happiness. I'm miserable. I'm sad. I'm depressed. Whatever it is. A lot of time, it's just a counseling session. Mm-hmm. It's just talking to someone. It's just opening up and trying to get those emotions out. Not you abandoning God and hoping that he still has you. Uh, when the devil finished all of this, he left him. Men shall not live off of bread alone. Right. Listen, we may want things, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the, we're human. We have right. things that we desire. But when you go to Christ in your song, it's not that you don't want anything at all for your life. It's just that you don't have to want anything because right. everything's going to be provided to you. Absolutely. You seek kingdom first. Mm-hmm. And what happens? All, these All things, things are added will be yeah. provided. So what do you need? If I was to join the military, mm-hmm. do I need shelter? No. Do I need food? They're going to give it to you. They gonna, yeah. So I get I get all these things right. by just submitting to the authority of the government. Right, right, right. That is what God is saying. I feel like that's what the message you're saying in your mm-hmm. song. Yep. It's not that you can't find happiness, you can't find peace. It's that you're trying to do it. Right. You're trying to take too much control of your life. And you don't have the knowledge, you don't know God's will, you don't know the plan, you don't Mm -hmm. know the mental struggles your kids or your spouse is dealing with. You're sitting here thinking that you're in this mental trap, not knowing that the only reason why you're in that space is because someone else in your life is not healed either. A lot of times we tend to think that everybody else got together and we we need to get ourselves together. And a lot of times that's just not the case. And so when I was listening to your song, that's how it really lifted me up to understand uh, where you were coming from. Uh, to hear a, a fellow Christian, you know, we have not uh, done any ministry together or anything like that, but I, I've seen you on Facebook. I've seen you publish your your song. And I said, man, I got to get this brother in here mm-hmm. because one, you're, you're, you're another black brother. We're in the same age range and we're kind of going through 
Like, haven't you felt like you, God don't know your name? Oh, yeah, for sure. I've definitely felt alone. I felt a- abandoned. Um, I felt like I wanted to give up. And I'm not even talking about stuff from years ago. I'm talking about every <laughs> every day, every other day, you know, yeah. you, you're, you're, you're fighting through. But I, I have an anchor in the word of God. And so even when you have those moments, that's, that's why it's really so important to to read his word. And you have to know his promises because when he's promised you something, that is that's your insurance and assurance. And you just hold on to the word, you know. But if you don't know, I, I empathize with a lot of people that don't know the word of God. They don't know really where to start when it comes to reading the word because they don't have enough in them to, to anchor them to what God said, you know. And you don't need a lot of scriptures. You just need to know a couple, you know, to anchor you. But even like this one, Psalms 23 and 1, the, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, I shall not want. You know, you just have to know enough just know one promise that can that can carry you over because the enemy's job is to um, pervert truth. His job is to speak so loud that it distracts you from the uh, actual direction that you're moving to. You know, he, he wants to distract you and speak so loudly that you turn your head and you, you're right, over somewhere right. else. You know, so when you know his word, know his promises, that's what Jesus did in the scripture. He just that he just read, you know, when the, the devil was coming to tempt him, Christ would come back and say, it is written. It is written. You know, and so and, and that was his insurance and his assurance. So you have to know what is written so that you can combat that type of warfare in the mind and, and the anxiety. Um, like I said, this is not like a old fighter battle. This is something that I have to do day to day. Is recite the word to calm the voices calm down, down the calm voice. right. the ocean, calm. You have to calm it all down with buy, the word. If you bought a new washer machine, yeah. it comes with an owner's man. What a lot of people do. Yeah, toss it. We've used the owner's yeah, man. We toss it. And we just load the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Now stuff's not working. Right. Now we're frustrated. Yeah. Now, now, now we're going there. We're going to run it again. Mm-hmm. Stuff's not working out. Now we're calling the 800 number. Now we're complaining. Now we don't even want to cook. Now we're going out to eat. Now we're just all fed up, right? Right. What didn't we do? What have we still not done? Right. We didn't read the instructions. Exactly. We still did not go back to see, I never took the cap off the back. Right. Right. A lot of times it's just that one scripture. Right. That is like, that's what it is the whole time. Right, right, right. I, I never... I never knew that I, you know, I'm always looking, I'm always looking out for me. Mm-hmm. I only care about me. I'm only trying to fix me. I'm only trying to fix my anxiety. I'm only trying to get relief. Right, right. right I right, never right. knew that if I seek kingdom first, mm-hmm. all these things, should all be the right. things that you're worried about. Right, right, right. I want to leave off with a scripture. Uh, and this is just, you know, we didn't script this. No, no. This is very powerful mm-hmm. stuff. We didn't even script it. But I do want to leave off with a scripture about. Uh, I think this one is in Matthew when Jesus tells us not to worry. Mm-hmm. Six Matthew six. Is it Matthew six? Six thirty six. There you go. Yeah. Look at you, Matthew yeah. six thirty six. Mm-hmm. Future ministers in the room. <laughs> um, okay, let's let's read that for our audience here um, because it's important. There's a lot of people that can't even control mm-hmm. the worry. It's it's so bad they can't yeah. even. They can't even um, just have it's regular life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It controls, it controls yeah. your wake up, your go to sleep, your at work, right. your relationship, right, right, dealing right. with your kids. Right, right, Some right. kids live on punishment, live mm-hmm. in fear, only not because they did anything wrong. Right. Just because the parent can't stop worrying that something might happen. Right. So they overprotect and yeah. overdo things because they feel like they need to once again right. take the wheel. Right, right. They right. need to take control, and in that way, I can get relief. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. It is not life is is not life more than food, mm-hmm. and the body more than clothes. Mm-hmm. Look at the birds in the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away in barns? And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can you, in any of you, add one more day or hour to your life by worrying? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers on the field grow. They don't even labor or spin. Mm-hmm. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. 
If that is how God clothes the grass on the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Mm -hmm. So do not worry. What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Right. For the pagans run all, run after all these things. Mm-hmm. Back, right there at 32, Jesus pretty much said it right there. Mm-hmm. Who goes after all those things? We, the pagans. pagans Gentiles, yeah. They go after. Mm-hmm. Every time they worry, they go after and fix it. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, I got this all under control. I'm going to fix it. Mm-hmm. Nobody stops and prays. Right, right. Nobody stops and Seeks the kingdom first. Right. Pagans fix it. Mm-hmm. Pagans go out and find their peace real quick. Find their happiness to cure the look. Like you said, we and a lot of times we can't help it, right? Like you said earlier, tolerance of pain is low, or we've been in so much pain. Mm-hmm. You know, we we're, we're at the point now where it could clinically be classified as depression mm-hmm. or schizophrenic or uh, any of these other mental illnesses out there because we let it go on for too long. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the mental illnesses that are diagnosed full-fledged OCD or schizophrenic or depression is only because we let it go on for too long, right? Like, what happens if you have a, a wound that's not properly treated? It gets infected. Mm-hmm. And if you really let it go on, you have to cut it off. Right. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's what's happening, that we allow, because we don't talk, we don't open up, we don't tell people our business. In fact, we stay away, we shield our life, we lie, we get off social media, we hide behind, and it just grows, yeah. and it grows. And it gets to a point where we no longer depend on God. We, we're just waiting on God, but we're not doing anything. Right. We're not reading the instruction manual. Right, right, right. So so very important. And um, yeah, when, when you're going through, like the scripture said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And there's a lot to God than we give him credit for. Yes. You know, we think, oh, it's, you think God, you think church, steeple. I don't know what comes to mind when you when you think church. I don't know the first couple words that come to mind. But there's a lot more to God than just church and what meets the eye. And so when you are seeking God and you're seeking his kingdom, you're going to find so much wealth in God, so much wealth in God, um, just from the wisdom, from from the knowledge, from the understanding. There's another scripture that's in Matthew when he's saying, uh, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. You'll see that my burden is easy. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. But sometimes people rush over that scripture where he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. At that point alone, you know, that's when you can see that the yoke is easy and the burden is light when you learn of him. Um, because other than that, you're going to always be fighting against him. But let me, let me just read that scripture yeah. for the audience. So take my yoke upon you. This is Matthew eleven twenty nine. If you got your Bible, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in, in, in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Mm-hmm. If your soul's unrested, mm-hmm. you're not happy. Right. You're not at peace. Mm-hmm. Did he say go find your peace? No. Did he say do you, boo boo? No, not at all. <laughs> Did he say take care of you first? Right. Did he say any of that? Right. No. He said, take my yoke upon you. Mm-hmm. Learn of me. Mm-hmm. Your soul will be rested. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. We got. The doctor's literally telling you stay away from carbs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> that you go eat carbs and you wonder why you need a new organ. Yeah, you see yeah. what I mean? Like you, you're. This is our help. Right. It is trying to say, listen, I'm the one who created you. Right. Don't you care to find out? Here's the thing: that's going to happen. God's will is going to get done regardless. Here's the thing: a lot of people are facing. Tough anxieties, and this is not scripture, this is a theory, although I have a scripture, but I don't want to take it out of context. But I I feel as though a lot of people are facing really tough and having a hard time with anxiety, primarily because they don't go to God for anything. They believe they are their own God. Right. Think about it like this. How scared would you be if, let's say you were, in the, in the army and the Navy SEALs and and, uh, and they got 
back at home, they got the satellites that can give you the infrared and tell you where everything is. How scared would you be if that communication was gone and you're just behind enemy lines? Right. That's what people are trying to do. That's right. You see what I mean? That's right. Yeah. The reason why your anxiety is so high is you're, because you cut off communication. Yeah. And you're you're carrying the load of a God. Of a, yeah, you're yeah. trying to be why do you want to be God? Yeah. Why would people want that assignment? Well, it's 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 the control. You know, to have control and you can say, you know, you, you can have control and say of the matters of your life. Mm. That is why people try to keep control. Mm. That's why. And that's why people seek. But other, is that the right no, avenue? No, it's, it's not the right. But avenue. I mean, counselors tell us yeah. that uh, you, you, you find you could you could scroll on um, you could scroll on social media and that's right. That's what people will tell. That's the right thing to do. You know, find you, find yourself, yeah. take control, you know. Well, that's so a, that's we're being told to do that. Yeah, your but, friends will tell you to do that. Leave him. Mm-hmm. Go find your happiness. Right. L- leave leave them kids. Just pay child support. They'll be okay. Right. Take care of you first, you know. Well, that's the major difference between secular and Christianity. But that's even Christians. It's, it is, but it shouldn't be. But the the, the major difference between the world and between the church or what's how it's supposed to be by design is that we believe God and we give up everything and, and um, see him as Lord of our life. We make him Lord. Like there's a scripture in Luke mm. chapter, uh, I think it's six, Luke mm. six forty six. He says, and why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. Right. You know, so we, the thing about Christians we are supposed to make him our Lord. And so we don't take matters into our own hands and it don't make sense to anybody. It doesn't make sense to anybody, but that that's where our, our faith comes in and we trust his word. And we believe that he's going to bring us into a place, you know, by his design, you know, according to his word and his promises. So it is hard to, to not have control. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not even going to act like it. It's not. But the main thing is to know that God has your best interests at heart. He, he says in the word to in Jeremiah, I know the, the thoughts that I think towards you. Um, they're thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Um, and so I just want anybody that listens to this song to just to be encouraged that this song was written out of a real place. It's written out of a place of disparity. You know, when you in those low moments, uh, Sometimes you you the prayers that you pray are, you know, of desperation. And so that's kind of where this this song um, eventually kind of evolved into is like, Lord, you know, I have a certain plan that I have for my life. You know, this is what I would like to see. But it ain't happening the way that I think it's going to happen. Or, you know, why can't I experience this, this, this and that? And I had to get to a place where, you know, I see, okay, I'm going to have to declare the word over my life because I have one or two options. I can stay here in God where though it's unknown, it's safe. I'm, I'm in the will of God, so I, I'm safe. Or I can go out and make a life for myself, but won't have that covering of God and won't have that insurance of his word. because which is going to increase your fear. Which is going to increase there. your fear, exactly. Which and whatever there. consequences come, that's on me. Because I don't have a covering, so it's on me. So I'm like faced between two decisions. Either you're going to trust me even when you don't see it, or you're going to go out there and make a life for yourself and be your own God. And so at that fork in the road, I'm saying, okay, Lord, you my shepherd, and I shall not want again. And not saying that I don't have things that I desire, but for me, the word want is anxiety. I I shall not have anxiety. About uh, the things that I I feel like I need, and he and he'll take care of me. You don't have anxiety. No, it doesn't mean that I don't have it. Yeah. It's a, it's a declaration over yourself. Right. You're, speaking You're speaking it over it. yourself. When God said, <laughs> when God said, "Let there be light," did He have to say, "Let there be light"? He didn't have to say it, but He spoke. Yeah, He That's declared it. Yeah, became existence. Mm-hmm. Every if you read Genesis, everything He says is God said. God mm-hmm. said, let there. God mm-hmm. said, let there. Then God created. He spoke it into existence. Mm-hmm. And that's and what so it was. Do. Yeah. The power of the tongue yeah. is very important. And you mm-hmm. speak it into existence. You shall not want. 
does not mean you're not going to want that you're not going to have anxiety or you're not going to worry but he's telling you that if you follow me mm-hmm. if you cast your anxieties on me i will rest your soul right and by saying i, I shall not want again it's also me coming into agreement with his word so you you know he he's saying that he's my shepherd and he's going to lead me path yeah, of righteousness name yeah he he's saying all these things okay lord i shall not want again i'm going to give up my my hyper focus on other things and the anxiety that i have and when i say i shall not want again it's me saying in other words that i come into agreement mm. with with your word and i 100% agree so once yeah. again guys download uh, you shall not want and keep following the gospel portal. We got so many things working on uh, in, in the ministry coming up 2023, 2024. Um, this is not going to be the last song, I'm sure. Um, and then any ministry out there that is looking, you know, for uh, guest appearances, um, I'm sure you would love to go and minister this song. Um, I didn't expect us to get this deep. I didn't know what listen, we, <laughs> we didn't we did not script yeah. it. We said camera but this is Action. this is the the faith and the theology behind the song like yeah. if anybody ever wanted to know you know what that mindset is by a, a simple message this is why like when you listen that's to why it, i didn't want to script it yeah, because yeah. i wanted to show how real it is i wanted right. the holy spirit to really take over the mic mm-hmm. just you have no choice but to bring it from your inside because Where we didn't, really there. We didn't yeah. write nothing down. Absolutely. We're over here memorizing scriptures and, you yeah. know, tell, you know, this is just letting you know, letting our audience know that this is deep rooted. Yeah. Um, and even though we are uh, spiritual individuals, we are not without fear. Absolutely. We are not free of anxiety. Right. But we have the, the peace of giving it up to God mm-hmm. and knowing that if we put the kingdom of, of God first, he will provide everything to us. Right. Um, and that's really the message that I uh, hope that you get from the, from the song uh, to be able to surrender your own will for your life. Uh, because if God created you and, and you do surrender that will to your, uh, of your life, it's not that God's, are you really trying to say that you don't want God's plan? I mean, by going with God's plan, at least you know that he holds the keys to the car. You see, you, you're you're making him fly the plane. Relax, right. take a nap sometimes, relax, and just go with the plan. Stop trying to fix it yourself. Right. Stop trying to worry about it. Stop trying to uh, feel like you need to fix it or you need to get your life together. Sometimes it's just really about do nothing. Right, right, right. Go into fellowship. Stop turning on TV, uh, church TV. Go into a church. Listen. Fellowship with other individuals. Testify about what you're going through. Stop hiding all your business. Sometimes getting it out, opening up, talking. Not to everybody, of course. But just to the right person. Someone that you can trust. Someone that you can be discipled by. That you can really lay out. You know, I've, 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 I've had a church where, you know, if someone told their business, they would kick you out of the church. I just didn't understand. I'm like... That person actually needed help. Yeah, but they can't they can't be in working in ministry and they can't be in Bible studies and they can't be because they gotta get they gotta fix that for what do you think they're here for? Um and I and you know, and so churches need to do better, but we're all human, you know. We're all trying to do we're all trying to get to that level. So uh William Howard, thank you once again for thank coming you for to thank you for uh, Music Out Portal Studios and uh guys check out the song and you'll be hearing from us soon. I think uh, I think uh, it was very genuine. Oh yeah, for sure. It didn't seem like you were trying to force it.